Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 6 of our API testing with REST Sharp and SpecFlow course. And in this video, we'll be talking about working with the generic and asynchronous execute methods. And again, this is part A, since the whole topic is actually little vaster than other topics that we have discussed before. And that's why we have split this into two parts, part A and part B. So in this part, we'll be discussing about some of the options which is available to work with in the execute method. And the next video will be handling the asynchronous method much efficiently. So let's get started. Execute without types. So, so far in our video series, we have been working with this execute method while executing the post and get operation request. And we saw this execute method is something that we used to get the response on its content. And then we parse the content and we saw what is the output of it. So we use this execute method. But this execute method can be extended even further by using what is called as a generic execute method where you can pass the type here. So as you can see here, I'm going to perform a post operation for the posts request. So as you can see, the post is a class that we created before in our previous videos of this course as a model. And I've just passed this as a input for the execute method so that the response which is going to be generated is going to be applied for this particular post class. So we'll see about this in demo, but don't worry about it. This is how we can perform a generic approach of execute method in REST Sharp. And the next one is the asynchronous request. So if you have any IO bound needs, you want to utilize asynchronous programming. So you could have a CPU bound course that's performing an expensive calculation, which is also a good scenario for writing asynchronous code. C Sharp has a language level asynchronous programming model, which allows for easily writing asynchronous code without having to juggle callbacks or conform to a library which support asynchrony. It follows what is known as a task-based asynchronous pattern. And that's most important because as you can see, it is a task-based asynchronous pattern and C Sharp by itself has a very, very cool way of working with an asynchronous programming. So this asynchronous is very important because this is exactly the asynchronous operation that we'll be doing within our REST Sharp API call as well. So since it is gonna be performing a asynchronous execute method because some APIs may take a lot of time. So we might need to just ignore those methods execution and we should keep on going. Or sometime we need to wait for that method to complete the whole execution and then we should proceed further. So that makes again a synchronous operation though. But still just to know how the asynchronous operation has to be handled, we have to write code something like this. As you can see, this particular method has a task completion source and then I'm passing the I rest response type in there. And then I'm just going to add a very, very super simple message that error retrieving the response for some reason, if the execute async operation is failing. And then I'm going to set the result for that particular task completion source. And then I'll be giving that particular execution result as an await of the task completion source dot task. By doing that, it's always a good practice that you can handle the asynchronous operation much efficiently. In our code, we will not be mostly running the whole code asynchronously because we need to wait for the output so that we can do an assertion. So for sure, I have to wait for the task to be completed. But this is something very, very important that you need to understand that we can perform an asynchronous operation where there are places that we may not need to wait for all the API call execution has been successfully completed. So there are two approaches to handle the situation of working with asynchronous call. One is since asynchronous methods are task based, the calling method should be either a sync or should be called within the task class, or we can use the get awaiter method to perform this operation. So let's quickly see whatever we have discussed in these slides in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Visual Studio IDE. All right, so this is the same product that we have been working so long in our course. And the first thing that we're going to do today is to remove this execute method to be using the actual type. As you can see, the model that we have is the post that we used earlier in one of our methods, as you can see over here. For the post with the type class body, we have used this particular class. But the more easiest way that you can do with the execute method is that every time while we use this particular execute method, we are actually not passing the type here. 
as you can see there is an overloaded or maybe an as generic execute method available within rest client which is nothing but the execute of t where the t can be of the type which can be used to deserialize the response content using the appropriate content handler so what does it mean is you can pass the posts in here something like this as you can do you can see that this particular response that is being generated is going to be of strongly type so you can get the response value out something like the response dot id or response dot author something like that so using that it's really really easy to handle those situations so we can do this those things using what is called as a data which is already available uh, within in here so as you can see there is something called as data property so this is a deserialized entity data which is going to get this particular value out from this one right so i'm just going to put a breakpoint here and I will quickly show you how the actual value is going to look like. See, I just modified this execute to posts. That's it. That's the only change which I have made in here. And now if I go back to the post with the type class body and if I debug this particular uh, method, you can see what magics are going to happen. So it's going to come in over here. And then if I just do a step over, so you can see that the response is going to be coming in here. And now if I go to the response and if I see here, oops, it seems like there is some problem with the uh, execution. It says that you are inserting the duplicate value because the 14 already exists. So we should somehow use a different value this time. So let's make this a 16. I remember we used 15 in our previous video. So I'm just gonna debug that for the new post creation because this is kind of unique and the server is not going to allow that and let's go over here to the response let's see what's the response value all right seems to be okay this time and now if i come all the way down in here there is something called as a data property see the content is something that we were using all these days this guy but there is also something called as data property so if i go to the data property this time do you see there is some interesting options coming in author id and titles are automatically being populated the reason why it is automatically being populated is because we have given the post class in here and the response is also going to be of type id author and title so it automatically deserializes all the value to this particular type and now what happens is you don't even have to deserialize all these values like how we are doing all these days in here we can probably do a control kc which is nothing but commenting the value and then we can use this dot data dot and if I use this guy oops I think this is going to be response so let's put this as response dot data dot and you can see that we get the ID tar, title and author and since we are uh, looking for author here I can just put the author in here and now the assertion should pass. So you can see that we have completely skipped the deserialization stuffs using this particular simple operation, right? So if I just do a step over once again, you can see the assertion has got passed. So I can just hit continue. So easy it is. So this is how you can see the power of the execute with generic approach, right? So if I want to make it like 17, Let's save it and let's try to execute this guy really quickly. You can see that this code is going to work. There you go. The post operation has been performed. And now if I go to the uh, postman and if I perform a get, you can see the 17 is also sitting in here. Right? So which means everything is working fine as expected. So this is how we can use the generic execute method to perform a post operation to pass a post model class which is nothing but this one to automatically deserialize to its type and then populate the value based on that this is one of the most easiest way of deserializing instead of using this kind of deserialization options that you are seeing here there are some more deserialization options available which we'll probably discuss in our upcoming videos but as of now just bear with me we are going to enhance the way the coding that we are doing all these days right and 
The next approach that we're going to be talking about is the asynchronous approach. So in order to work with asynchronous approach, all we have to do is this. We are going to make use of what is called as a async method. But the sync method that as you can see in here dot execute async method this execute async method is going to be returning you a rest request async handle callback so you need to pass that so for doing that we are going to be writing a custom method over here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to be writing this particular method so for doing that I'm just gonna copy this code and I'm gonna be pasting it over here and I'm just gonna create a structure in this particular video in our next video we'll actually try to discuss how we can write the asynchronous method in much efficient way so uh, post with type class body I'm gonna call this as post with async All right and instead of using this particular method in here I'm going to be using the asynchronous method so I'm just going to write a private method this time and this method is basically going to be of a uh, async type and it's going to be of task so we are be we're going to use the task class here so this task is actually sitting using system.threading.tasks so I'll be using this particular namespace and then I'll be using the i rest char rest response of t. So it seems like there are so many generic types in here. And then I'll be calling this as execute async request, something like that. I'll be then passing the client here, so which is nothing but the rest client. And then I'll be passing the I rest request because that's something very, very important. So I rest request. And here I'll be passing the request. So that's this one. Right? So the whole implementation of this particular method is going to be discussed in our next video. But as of now, this is how you can see that we can perform the execute operation with the generic type. And we're going to leverage the same power for the synchronous operation as well. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and stay tuned for our next video for completing this particular video with a synchronous operation. Thank you.